Home Assistant's July release is upon us with 2024.7 landing today, adding a number of excellent improvements such as customizable columns and tables, new controls for blueprints, improvements to template entities and some tweaks to the home zone. First up, however, a big new addition to the new drag and drop UI that landed earlier this year is that you can now resize cards on your dashboard to be whatever width and height you would like. In previous releases with the new drag and drop UI, you could add a card to your dashboard and it would typically be a fixed size within a section and you can kind of change it. There were workarounds by using a vertical or a horizontal stack, but these did have some limitations. However, in this release, you can now completely resize individual cards to take up more or less columns and rows as you see fit. If you edit a card on the dashboard, you can now head over to the layout tab and interactively select how many columns and rows you would like a card to take up, either by using the sliders or just clicking right on the tiles. And you'll get an idea of the size in the preview window. You can also click the little reset button in the corner to put it back to the default size. This is a really cool addition and one that was really needed to take customization of dashboards to the next level without requiring any workarounds or diving into YAML code. It's just a nice option built right into the UI and I'm really looking forward to seeing what everyone creates with this in the new drag and drop dashboard. Next up, while we are talking about UI features, another little quality of life improvement in this release is that you can now change the size of the home zone radius right from the UI, which was previously locked unless you use the YAML, letting you increase or decrease the default radius to make it more suitable for your needs and to help with the other integrations that use the home zone like proximity. Next up, data tables have become a hot feature in the last few releases and has been getting improvement after improvement and this release adds to that once again. Data tables in the UI can now have their columns customized so that you can only see the information that you need to see. If you head somewhere in the UI that has a data table, you can hit the little cog in the top right hand corner and select which columns to hide or show depending on what you want to see. Perhaps if you need to make the UI less overwhelming and just see the integrations that a device uses, for example, you can now do that with this new feature. Not only that, but you can also reorder the columns if you like by dragging and dropping them around to an order that suits you. Next up, have you ever used a blueprint from a kind contributor to the community but wanted to make a slight change or add another action to it, but find the blueprint locked down and not editable unless you wanted to start digging around into the original YAML? Well, in 2024.7, you can now manually take control of a blueprint, allowing you to make changes and tweaks until your heart's content. If you head into a blueprint, you will find a take control button inside of the three dots menu, which will convert the blueprint into a regular automation or script, letting you make all of the changes you desire. This makes it even easier to share and copy blueprints and automations from others and make them work for your smart home. Nice. I also wanted to talk about a new ESP home feature since it relates closely to Home Assistant, and that is to do with how updates are delivered. Previously, to get updates for devices with ESP Home installed, you would need to have the ESP Home add-on running with the config adopted for that device, and then updates would show up in the update section inside of Home Assistant. However, with this new release, devices can now receive updates without the need for any of that. You don't even need to have the ESP Home add-on installed. This means that makers of devices like the Home Assistant Glow, the Tag Reader, Smart Plant, the EP1 and Lite, and many others can offer you updates for your device right inside of Home Assistant even more seamlessly than was previously possible. Finally, for the big stuff, you can now link template entities to an existing device so that it appears like it was part of the original integration. If you create a template sensor now in the UI, you'll find that there is a drop down to select a device which will link this new template sensor that you're creating to that original device. This means that when you go in and view the device in the integrations menu, for example, your template sensor will show up there just like it was always a part of that original device 
and always a part of the original integration. As for the little things this month, the NanoLeaf integration now has support for event entities. The Fully Kiosk integration now has added support for a camera from the device, along with an image entity for screenshots. You can now change your username in Home Assistant, which wasn't previously possible. And finally, the Matter integration can now provide a number entity that allows you to configure the behavior of lights for things like transition times and power on level. As for new integrations this month, there is four new integrations available in this release, including a self-hosted recipe and meal planner, which sounds pretty cool. We'll definitely need to check that out. And we also have eight integrations now available to set up from the UI instead of YAML, including the generic thermostat platform, which I'm really glad to see moved over as that is one that I use. And as for breaking changes or backwards incompatible changes, there is a little bit of a longer list this month, nothing major that I can see, and it's mostly just removal of deprecated services or entities that have been warned about for some time, so hopefully no issues there. But do have a check for yourself, as always, before updating to make sure nothing applies to you. And that's about it for this release, some really nice quality of life improvements in this update. Really, really happy to see the resizable cards in the new drag and drop dashboard. I think that is a killer new addition personally. And this is what I was waiting for to remake our dashboard video. So do keep an eye out for that. But I would love to hear your favorite new additions from this update down in the comments. Also low key love that new ESP home updates feature too for obvious reasons. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. Please drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.